permission of the court in Jamaica for the cell phone, which is at the heart of the Crown's case, the cell phone belonging to Mr. Palmer. Viewers and subscribers, welcome back to another update. So the DPP Paula Lowlin speaks on you know the court's decision to refuse you know the application of fresh evidence. Talk a lot of things. She explained the whole process. You know what took place in Jamaica with Vibes Cartel and the lawyers. So everybody knows say uh, Vibes Cartel's lawyer Isaac Buchanan they ordered a forensic expert you know to test the cell phone you know to find out whether it w was being tampered with and you know them find some findings you know Isaac Buchanan came and Fox 5 and he explained the whole thing say some some data were missing and stuff like that so you know Paula Lewin was speaking about that and oh you know the um, Vibes Cartel lawyer tried to admit that fresh evidence into the UK Privy Council and everything people so she even spoke about you know when the Privy Council is expected to make a decision in Vibes Cartel appeal I'm gonna play this audio with you know Paula Lewin speaking and you the viewers tell me what you think about it don't forget to leave a like on this video. The, the Privy Council refusal to the ap ap application for leave to argue additional grounds in the case of Sean Campbell, Alita yeah. Palmer, Kaira Jones, and Andre St. John. Yeah. I want you to really explain to the IRFM listeners. It's a total different kind of listeners, them. The IRFM okay. listeners. What is this happening here now? Because there's a lot of Two things that happen say why well, I'm not gonna come out of jail now because they refuse this and refuse that. So you are the best well, person to Well the thing with. about it is I'm just just a humble um how should I put it prosecutor who is gonna make an attempt to explain. The thing is you know that Mr Palmer and other persons were convicted of murder at the trial. Then the matter went to the appeal court. They appealed conviction and sentence. And you had many days of arguments between their lawyers and lawyers for the Crown, for the prosecution. At the end of the day, the judges um, upheld the conviction and sentence. However, there were arguments in law where their lawyers sought to persuade the Court of Appeal to allow, give them what we call leave to appeal to the Privy Council in England. The Privy Council, according to our structure, legal structure, is still the highest appellate body for Jamaica. So the Court of Appeal in Jamaica, while the matter is there, waiting to be heard in England before the Privy Council there. The lawyers in England and here for Mr. Palmer and the other accused asked permission of the court in Jamaica for the cell phone, which is at the heart of the Crown's case, the cell phone belonging Mr. Palmer to Mr. Palmer to be examined by their expert. The court here granted that permission on the condition that the cell phone is to be examined in the presence of the expert, the cyber expert prosecution. So they were able to examine the phone. So what they did is sought leave from the Privy Council and they did this in writing. So at the Privy Council, at the Court of Appeal here too, you have to submit written submissions. Then the Privy Council now will decide whether they need to hear from you. So written submissions were submitted by Mr. Palmer's lawyers as well as the lawyers in England for the Crown to do what we call adduce fresh evidence. That is fresh evidence from the expert, their expert who examined the phone. And also, they decided to seek permission of the Privy Council 
to advance or to argue additional grounds that they didn't argue in the Court of Appeal in Jamaica as part of their application for leave, permission, to go to the Privy Council. So, detailed submissions were submitted by the um, lawyers for the appellants, as Mr. Palmer and the others, as well as lawyers for the Crown. And we have English um, barristers as well in England acting for the Crown. And so, the Privy Council, having considered the written submissions, decided to refuse the application for leave to adduce the fresh evidence That is the evidence that they wanted to bring before the Privy Council to try to establish that there was some improper interference with the cellular phone of Mr. Palmer while it was in the custody of the police. So they refused permission to do that. And they also refused permission for his lawyers to advance additional grounds of appeal in respect of which permission had not been previously granted by the Court of Appeal in Jamaica. So with that, there remains the substantial appeal against conviction and sentence, which will be heard by the Privy Council at an appointed date. All right, so I'm going to ask you a question. this the thing around the cell phone was what Adija Palmer lawyers was 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 wa- wanted to 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 advance in the court had the pass that already in the local court. The right. local court did already throw it down. No, no. So what happened? Remember, the prosecution centered a lot of its case on the contents of, of the, the cell phone. phone, the voice yes. notes, and that sort of thing. Yes. So at the privy council. I mean, this thing has gone now. It has gone through quite a period. And yeah. at the Privy Council, they, his lawyers now, wanted permission to adduce what we call in law fresh evidence. So whatever the expert found and has put in a report, they wanted to be able to call the expert who would swear on the Bible or affirm, as the case yeah. may be, and give that evidence to the privy okay. council up there or so the, put put the written report before them so that is what they refused as so well the, as additional grounds that they had formulated so you know you, you have any idea what the new evidence would be or could be well what would happen you know is that written submission perhaps it would be what the expert found but written submissions of this would be put before the um the, the, the Privy Council and the yeah. reason why it is it was not available at the time of the trial because okay. there, there's a concept in law called fresh evidence also at the appellate court in Jamaica so for it to be able to pass muster it would have to have not been available at the time of the trial yeah. and it would have to be credible um, basically so it is for the Privy Council, having looked at the written submission, to decide as a matter of law whether it um, they could give that permission as a matter of law. Because remember, you know, Mr. B- Muta Baruka, when we're dealing with law, some people think that the law can be an act, but when you're dealing with law, it's an objective situation. It's not about how you feel or whether the person who is appealing is popular. It's about what the case law that has been decided over the years, what yeah. it has to say on the point, and the material that the, the, the lawyer, whether for the Crown or for the defense, is going to put before the Privy Council to say, this is why, and this is the case law that supports that. Uh, so what they the, looked at all the written submissions and they refused. What the, um, application. What Adija Palmer 
lawyers are asking for is there a precedence to that that they could bring to the the privy council or the court down here well the, if, if you're looking at the concept of fresh evidence it's a concept known to law the concept of fresh evidence it's a concept well-known concept known to law but the thing is whether the material or what they're seeking to advance as the reason why they didn't put it forward before yeah. or of what import it's going to be in the scheme of things it's whether as far as the judges are concerned it is justified by the case law or whether the case law can decide it to justify them if yeah, they yeah. don't find that the case law the objective case law and the material presented that it, it match then they are not going to allow you. Okay. It so what will happen? Has happened here in Jamaica. In the so what will happen now? What will happen now? No, that well, is what happening. happens? They having refused these applications. The main substantive appeal now against conviction and sentence will be heard by the Privy Council at a date that they will set. You understand? So it is yeah. substantive appeal now where they are saying based on this evidence based on this particular ground of appeal that we are advancing we should not have been convicted and we should not have and therefore the sentence should be set aside so okay. what they want is for the conviction to be quashed and the sentence set aside but when you are in the appeal court it's not a trial of the case all over again Okay. Right, like when the jury, when the jury sit and hear the evidence and hear the witnesses give the testimony and you hear cross-examination, that is that what happens on appeal. On appeal, it's all about the law, right? So you have, you will have about what is it, about five judges um, at the Privy Council who will sit and listen to arguments in law, looking at you the have- circumstances of the the evidence that was put forward but arguments only in law would be made by the attorneys the lawyers for both sides both for the you appellant know, and for the crown and so is there, side. is there any time i mean time granted this thing would proceed or continue or i have to sit down there another seven years to find out no 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 i mean the the thing is that i i would think sometime some somewhere before the end of the year okay that, that okay. may be set for their calendar because remember they, they have other cases that they have to hear from other countries in the caribbean from countries in asia um, they have other con- other cases that they have to hear. So they are the ones who set the calendar. And then okay. they notify the lawyers on both sides. Well, well, you, you have made it clear. I mean, you, you, you said better than if I did just read it off of the paper. You know, so, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so okay. we give thanks. We give thanks for your contribution here. And, well, you, are still you, the, and you are still the director of public prosecution. Yes, when last I checked, I was still the director for it. Because I, I, I heard some squabbling going around the place that it's time you go <laughs> because of your because of your age. <laughs> and you know, I, I somebody said to me, "Boy, Miss Lillian, what are we? Your age going all over the place." I said, "But well, what is a very good thing is that everybody says." But you look much younger than what you actually are. <laughs> <laughs> I think All right. I like to I like to smile. So there you have it, viewers and subscribers, you know, Paula Lou Willin, the DPP, you know, talks about the Privy Council decision to refuse the submission of fresh cell phone evidence into Vibes Cartel's case. You know, Vibes Cartel appeal, you know, two day. You know, it lasted for two days. So, you know, further down in the summer or before the end of the year, we will know the, the final decision of the Privy Council whether or not they're going to let them go. You know, do a retrial or give Vibes Cartel a lesser sentence.